Home Assistant 2024.2 is here. This month is a surprisingly big release with lots of new things to dive into, including history downloading, matter diagnostic tools, Zigbee updates, and three new improvements to voice. But first up, drag and drop is here, at least for automations. If you now head into the automation editor in 2024.2, you will see that each element now has a little grid symbol on it where you can hover over it and drag and drop items to reorder them. This is really useful, for example, on actions where the order of items can be important for the sequence that they run in. What's also really useful is that this also works for nested items. So now, for example, if you are using the choose action, you can have a bunch of different options. You can now drag and drop elements to different options and move them around however you want. Not only can you drag items around within the same choose block, but you can also drag an item from one choose block to a completely different choose block. And you can even drag things like the condition of a choose block into just a regular condition or a regular condition into a choose block. This is super handy feature for more complex automations that have a lot going on. Next up, Matter in Home Assistant receives some improvements to help with troubleshooting devices. If you now head into a Matter device, there is a little drop down on the left hand side that you can expand to give you more information. And in particular, it can be useful to see if a particular device is acting as a router for the rest of the network to improve the mesh or as a sleepy end device, which don't. This can also be useful to see the network type for the device and the network name if it is a thread device. Then you can now go into the three dots where we have several new options. Manage fabrics will allow you to see the ecosystems that have access to the matter device and allow you to delete them. Re-interview device allows you to kind of refresh the device if it isn't working correctly or some options are missing. View thread network, which allows you to see the thread networks that you have in your household, which as we know, they don't always play nice together as of right now. And finally, ping devices allows you to perform a check to the device from your home assistant server to see if it's reachable. Finally, the last new addition here is the inclusion of this new share devices button, which will let you put the device in pairing mode, which will generate a QR code and a code which will then allow you to pair it with another Matter controller to control it from another ecosystem like HomeKit or Google Home alongside Home Assistant. This is a really big inclusion and one that has been missing up until now, so really good to see that it has been added. Along a similar thread, pun intended, our next feature adds a new functionality to Zigbee and that is that there is now a new update entity for Zigbee devices in Home Assistant when using ZHA, which means that if there is any firmware updates available for your Zigbee devices, you can now update them through ZHA and it will also show up in the update section along with any other add-ons and devices. There is currently support for Inovelli, Osram, LED Vance, Sonoff and third reality devices using this update mechanism and they are hoping to add more brands in the future. Now, they did also let us know that the updates do take a very long time when using Zigbee, as in several hours to update. So don't worry if you don't see the progress bar moving very quickly, but the device will keep working throughout the update, so no need to worry there. Nice little addition here for ZHA users, and hopefully more brands will come on board soon so that we can update all the Zigbee devices. Next, you know the Home Assistant history for devices that can store values for sensors and entities and devices and allow you to look back on them over a period of time. Well, have you ever wished for a way to get the data out to add it to long-term stats or do more analysis or comparisons on it using Excel or Google Docs? Well, now you can. If you go into the history dashboard, you can now select some entities to get history from, select a time frame, and then hit the new download button, which is going to give you a CSV file with all of the history for the selected devices in it, which can then easily be loaded into Excel or Google Docs, or even something like Elasticsearch to allow visualization and comparisons. Cool. Finally, we have three new features for Assist, the voice assistant in Home Assistant. 
Firstly, Assist now has much improved handling of errors when you ask it to do something that it doesn't understand. In previous versions, when you asked Assist to turn on a light that didn't exist or control an area that didn't exist, for example, it would just give you a generic error message. But now in 2024.2, it will give you back a more specific reason for the error, which should help with troubleshooting why something isn't working. And speaking of devices not working, alongside showing you which devices in Home Assistant you have exposed to Assist, there is now a new page that shows you which devices you have set up as microphones for Assist. If you head over to Settings, Voice Assistance, and then click the Assist Device button, it will give you a list of devices that you have set up as Assist devices alongside with which pipeline they are running. Finally, have you ever created an automation that uses a custom voice sentence for Assist only for Assist to just reply with, done? which didn't really make sense if you were asking it a question, for example. Well, now in February's update, you can now create a custom response, which is amazing, as now you can ask things like, what's on my to-do list for today, and get back useful responses like the contents of your to-do list, rather than it just saying done. This is a really powerful new feature that was previously only possible by writing a bunch of advanced YAML, and although you do need to know some templating to get things like the to-do list or calendar events, which I hope can be improved in the future, this is a really, really cool new powerful addition. As for the little things this month, firstly, there is now icons nearly everywhere in the UI, particularly noticeable on things like automation actions, the Ecovax integration has seen a lot of improvements and now supports many, many more Dbot vacuum models and lots more entities to go along with them. There is now automatic cleanups of old and unused refresh tokens for devices that haven't logged in for more than 90 days. The Tuya integration has now been drastically improved in terms of the setup process and you can now invert the behavior of switches when changing the type to something else. In terms of new integrations this month, there is an absolute mammoth 19 new integrations in this release. I think that might be the most new integrations I've ever seen in a single release, including a new Govi Lights local integration. That is a really cool one on there. Love to see that. And there's also an integration to pull in Home Assistant Analytics if you would like to monitor those using your Home Assistant server. So it's like you send your analytics to Home Assistant from your Home Assistant, and then you pull those analytics back from Home Assistant back to your Home Assistant server. So it's like analyticception, just make sure and spell that right. Alongside all of those wonderful new integrations, there's also six new integrations available to set up in the UI instead of via YAML. Finally, as for backward incompatible changes or breaking changes, there is quite a long list this month after the rather short list last month, so you do need to check through this list. The ones that stand out as more popular integrations are MQTT. There is a couple of minor configuration ones that will need corrected there, so do check that. There is also the Roborock integration, which has had a service call name change and one that will probably affect a lot of you is the Tuya integration that I briefly touched on earlier. So as mentioned, this release does drastically affect the setup process of the Tuya integration in Home Assistant and makes it much easier. But the downside of that is that you will get repair message to re-authenticate your Tuya account because of this. So do check that out. Again, this message will pop up in your repair section as soon as you update, so it should be obvious. So just be aware of that when you're going into this update if you are a Tuya user. Again, as always, do make sure to have a read of the breaking changes section for yourself to check out all of the new integrations uh, and the changes that apply to you. And that is it for this release. This was quite a big release this month, which is really cool. Love to see all of the new integrations too. My favorite new feature of this release is probably the new drag and drop in automations. Makes it so much easier to rearrange things rather than using the little arrows, which I find annoying. Or I do really like the custom responses for assist too. I think that fills a big gap that was missing. Both of those are super cool new features, but do let me know your favorite new feature, of course, down in the comments. 
Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Drop this video a like and get subscribed, and I will see you in the next video.